If you could go back to the version of you two years ago who said to the label, I don't want to write, just send me songs, what would you say to that version of you? I'd say, oh, you silly little sausage. <laughs> you, you didn't know what you were going to do. Hi, I'm Nick, and I'm joined by Perry for the latest in Enemies in Conversation series. How's it all going today? Good, okay, thank you. How are you today? Good, thanks. Thank you Good. for having us in your home studio. Thank you for coming over. <laughs> <laughs> when did you have this place built, or I guess converted? Um, oh gosh, maybe two and a bit years now. So right at the start of my solo venture. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was my partner's idea actually, it was Alex's idea. He, was, he knows that I like to be home and I don't really go anywhere unless I have to. So he was like, why not build a studio in the house and then you can do it all from there. So it's been an absolute godsend, I've loved it. I've loved having it here. And have you recorded everything pretty much mm -hmm. in here? Pretty much everything. The only things that I haven't recorded here were recorded in Weymouth, where I did a writing camp and I grew up in Weymouth when I was younger. And my mum still lives there. So we just took all my favourite writers, producers, had a little holiday, little beach town. It was great. I loved it. That's amazing. So you've literally mm. been recording in your own home and somewhere that is kind of feels yeah, like home. Yeah, home away from home, yeah. It's what, been amazing. What was the starting point of your, your solo journey? I think your last Little Mix show was May twenty. 2022. Yep. Were you thinking about solo stuff before then or did it only come after? Uh, if I'm being totally honest, the last thing I thought about was that I just, because obviously at the time I was pregnant when we were doing our last bit of music videos and then we went on tour and we had like our little bubbers. I think Axel was maybe five, six months and I just wanted to focus on being a mum. Like it was the best thing that ever happened to me and I didn't want to miss anything and just wanted to live in that bubble with him for as long as I possibly could which is why I've loved having my studio at home because I feel like I haven't missed a bath time and I haven't missed all these different things. So yeah, I just wanted to focus on that. And then the more I started getting in the studio, the more I realized, oh God, yeah, I love doing what I do. So, mm -hmm. What was the starting point for your solo music? Did you have kind of like um, particular artists in mind, just inspiration, particular mm -hmm. sounds? Yeah, there's, I think I remember making a playlist for my team and it is the most random playlist ever but it's because I'm very eclectic I love all different music from all different genres and my dad obviously I grew up with him being in a rock band so like old school 80s pop rock journey Guns N' Roses Aerosmith that's like my absolute love and then my mum on the other hand would be belting out Alanis Morissette and Motown and all those kind of things so I think I just wanted to take a little bit of inspiration from everywhere and that's why I just had fun with it exploring different sounds and seeing what suited me because I didn't know who I was as an artist so it was just fun figuring it out. Is this the place that's on Spotify because I mean that's yeah. got everything like Whitney Houston yeah. to like Paramore, exactly. Harry Styles, yeah, bit Donna of Summer. Punk, bit of rock, bit of Motown, all the divas and um, I think obviously vocally the divas are my biggest inspiration because I just I'm obsessed so that was like what I wanted more than anything on my album I wanted vocal moments and moments where I could just be lost in the song and just letting it rip. Like that's what I wanted the most. And as I understand it, at the start of the process, you weren't entirely sure if you wanted to write. Yeah, no. And why not? I was so, <laughs> I was just so insecure, I think. I was just so shy. Um, it's, it's really a drastic change when you go from being in a girl group and having your girls constantly with you, holding your hand. Like I was literally the baby. So I would just be like, help me all the time. And it can be quite, overwhelming when there's loads of people in a room and you're supposed to be talking about your feelings and your emotions and what you want to put in that song and I sat down with my label at the start and I was like guys I don't want to write anything I just want to be sent songs I just want to sing them like I remember watching the Whitney movie and she would sit in the office and be like I like that I don't like that and that's how I imagined my music career and my path going and then they were like why don't you just try some sessions with like friends or like people you've worked with a lot in the past that make you feel comfortable like Jin Jin and things like that. I've known her forever and I would never feel judged by her in the room. So the more I did sessions, the more I become more confident, the more I was writing down lyric ideas, concept ideas and then I started taking the reins a bit more myself and I think it just kind of spiralled from there and there's only a handful of songs on my album I haven't either co-written or written so I'm very proud. I've went from one extreme to the other. What did you learn about yourself from writing more? Oh, probably just because I have really bad imposter syndrome because I always think, what am I doing here? Like, this is wild. But then the more, like, as I say, the more I built my confidence and the more I kept hearing songs, 
and playing it to my team and playing it to my label and they'd think it was great, I'd be like, oh, maybe I am good. Like, maybe I can do this. I don't know. So I just kept, I think practice makes perfect in everything in life, but you've definitely got to let go in the studio. You can't take it too seriously and take things to heart if your idea is not good or if you've got like a lyric idea and it gets shot down there and then it's like, instead of letting it consume you, which I would, because that's my personality, I'm like, okay, next idea, let's try something else. So you've got to just kind of own the room a bit, which is kind of weird for me to do. Yeah, well, I guess ultimately it's, it's your project, it's going to have mm. your name on it, so you kind yeah. of do need to call the shots at some point. Yeah, absolutely. Know. So I've had to have my big girl pants on and, and do it and just throw myself in and just be like, come on, you can, you can do it, just try. But I'm glad I did, because I've, I've loved every second of making this album. It's been so good. Why is Forget About Us the right one to launch with? I mean, it's a banger, but yeah, why is it single you. one? It just felt right. I think it just felt instinctively right, and the team all agreed. And as soon as like Ed sent it, I thought, oh, that's, it is a bit of a banger. And I noticed myself singing it every two seconds around the house. I'd be like, what is that song again? I'm like, oh my God, it's the song. So yeah, it just felt like it was the one. So how did the song come about? Ed, did Ed send you like a kind of demo? Yes. This is, yeah. yes, so Ed sent me the song and then I spoke to him and at the time like the lyrics were very, like the concept was very direct to what it was about and I rang him and um, I was like, would you mind if I just tweak little bits and I was like, I'm not going to just be on the writing credits for the crack because that gives me the ick, I hate when people do that, I don't want to take away, your, you produced this song, you wrote it, you sent it to me, I just want to tweak it lyrically so that it's more me and it's more where I'm at in my life now. Um, and I felt really strongly about the concept being in that direction, not that one. Um, and he was totally cool with it. He was so supportive. He was like, I want you to take full ownership in it. Whatever you're not comfortable with, change it. And we'll work on it from then. So I did a session um, on Zoom. And yeah, and we kind of got it to where it is now. So I'm really happy now. And you worked as well with David Hodges yes. on that track, who's worked with, I think, Avril Lavigne and Kelly Clarkson. Yes. And he was in Evanescence back Evanescence, in my favourite. I'm obsessed. <laughs> with Evanescence. Um, so yeah, it's so cool. <laughs> it's, a real, it's a real banger. Mm, thank you. It's going to sound great on the radio. Thank we were just you. saying that earlier. Yeah, I think it's a good radio song as well, which is why I was so excited to release it first. And it can kind of open the gates a little bit because obviously my singles to follow are quite different from my first single. Um, like I said at the start, like it's very eclectic. So it's, yeah. It's exciting. Was it important for you to launch with like what I would call is a singy song? Like it is something that you're going to bet out? Because some <laughs> pop songs now, they aren't in that way. You know, they're not diva yeah. songs, whereas this is. Yeah, I wanted every song, I wanted vocal moments somewhere. So I didn't want a song that was just kind of a generic vocal all the way through, which is why I just like, even at the last second, I think if a week ago, maybe I had like an event and I just recorded the ad libs that morning because I just felt like it wasn't right. I'm like, something's missing. It's not right. So I rang Depeche, the head of my label, and he was like, would you want to do more ad libs? And I'm like, I would never say no to more, more ad libs. <laughs> like the more the merrier because I will ad lib from start to finish if I can. Um, and he was like, great. So do you want to get them in? I was like, yeah, I'll do it this morning. And then will it be ready in time for the event tonight for everyone to hear? And he was like, yeah, yeah, I'm sure we can make it work. But just adding those like big ad libs at the end, I think elevates the song. I love an ad lib. <laughs> <laughs> How many songs do you kind of have in the bag now? I guess some might be more finished than others, but. Quite a lot. And they're pretty much all finished as well. They're all in a really good place. Um, so yeah, there's, there's been a lot of conversations with my label where they're like, ah, I think a deluxe should be about 14, 16 songs. And I'm like, what about 20? 20 is a lovely number, 19? more the merrier and they're like yeah we'll see we'll see but I think you just get attached to them they're like my babies and I'm so proud of them and everyone's got different favorites as well so it's quite hard to whittle them down to just one album but there's pretty much an album in the bag yes 100% wow. my album yes is and like how far ahead have you got a kind of plan in your head like how the rest of the year will go yes roughly yes but you just never know yeah. with this industry it's all very last minute and all very like anything could change at any second so I think I'm just going with the floor, but I'm comfortable knowing I've got all the songs ready and banked to, to go. I think the thing fans will really want to know, could there be live shows this year? I hope so, yeah. <laughs> I would like to do some live performances. Yeah. This song's going to sound great live. I when hope When it comes to so. the right time. Yeah, I hope so. I can definitely see it now with the band and just living my best life. I'm going to be terrified, don't get me wrong, but it's going to be epic. 
Who else have you written with on the album? I think I know Ray is. Yes, is on Ray. There. Yeah, Ray. She came over and it was just the best day. She, I just love her so much. She is. Every time I see her win an award or just anything happens to her, I'm like, I'm so happy because she just deserves to win. Like she's the nicest, most genuine person, but her talent is ridiculous. Like she opens her mouth and I'm just like, oh my God, I'm just in awe of her. And at the time her single was doing really well and we like celebrated with a little crisp cake. My mum was like trying to find something in the kitchen to congratulate her. So we got a little crisp cake and a candle. Um, and we, we wrote a song that day called 2-2, um, Two Two, so I'm really proud of it, I love it. But she's just epic. I feel like anything she does is incredible, so I'm very lucky that I got to work with her. What's that song 2-2 Two Two about? It's about my partner, actually. <laughs> I was going to say, it sounds like a football song. It's a football song, yes, <laughs> indeed. Um, to be honest, it just started because I was like, in a relationship I can be quite petty. I don't know if that's my star sign, I don't know if it's because I'm cancer and I'm stubborn and I like to hold a grudge, but we never argue, like we don't argue, we're pretty chilled, like he's so laid back, but at times I will just hold a grudge for the sake of it and just be, but I just think if he just looks at me and smiles and like, like he's like, come on, I'd be like, oh, gee, okay, all is forgotten, but he doesn't and I won't back down either. So that's kind of what the song is about. <laughs> <laughs> What does he think of the song? He really likes it. He really likes it. To be fair, at first when I play him a song, he always just listens to the song. He doesn't listen to the lyric necessarily. Okay. Which I'm learning a lot about people. Yeah. Some people will hear a song and hear the med like the melody, and some people will listen straight for the lyric, and some people just won't take in either and mm. just decide if they like it or not. But he definitely listens to like the song as a whole, and then I'll ask him like, "Oh, what did what did you think of the lyrics?" And he's like. Why would it, what did you say? And I'm like, did you not hear what I said? And he's like, wait, play it again. And then he'll take it in the second time. Um, but he likes it. It's all fun and games really, isn't it? I've written about him loads on the album. So he's got nice songs too, don't worry. <laughs> he's gonna have to get used to it. Yeah, there's lovely dovey songs up there as well. Um, but yeah, it just seemed like a fun concept that I think people can relate to. Like when you hear the lyrics, it is quite relatable. It sounds like quite a fun song. And what you're saying mm. right at the start of the interview that like going into a songwriting session with someone is quite intimidating because you have to be mm. vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Now, I imagine Ray is someone who probably would put you at ease quite soon, so oh, you yeah. could write that kind Instantly. of fun song with her. Yeah, absolutely. Because she's just so sweet and lovely and she'll get on the keys and start playing chords. I'm like, oh, that sounds really good and this, that and the other. And then you kind of build from there. But yeah, it is very intimidating going into a studio with people you don't even know. You've never met this person yeah. before, but you're like, let's write a song about this. And it, but it's also so fun as well and creative, so, yeah. I guess, I mean, you've been having to do that for a long time, but as you say, in the past, mm. you had your bandmates there, so it wasn't... Yeah. There were several of you having the same yeah, situation. Yeah, exactly. And I think, like, at the time as well, I never wrote a lot in the band. I didn't write a lot of the songs when I was in the band. Um, I always just kind of took a back seat, so, yeah, it was weird for me to have to step up now and be like, OK, I'm going to write some music. Here it goes. I guess the thing is with any band that people kind of fit in, like find their own slot in it. Mm. Was it hard as a soul artist to think, oh gosh, like now I haven't got my slot in this group, I kind of have to do everything? Oh yeah, it's terrifying. Mm. Like I, out of anyone I know, I like my comforts. I like being in, I like being at home. I like my friends and family around me. I have a very small circle of people that I trust that are around me all the time. So to not have the girls there anymore is bizarre mm. to me. I find it weird when I'm in glam, I find it odd that Leanne's not playing stuff on the, like playing music and we're all just chatting and like we had the best time in the band. It was honestly the best experience of my entire life. So now that we've all gone our separate ways, it's incredible seeing them win and also trying it for myself. So it's just, I think it's just change. I don't mm. like change <laughs> ever in my life. So it is a lot, but I have had the best time. So I'm, I'm really grateful of it. <laughs> you mentioned, we talked about some of the influence on the album. Mm. Um, Paramore. I think you've said that Hayley Williams is one of the reasons you wanted to become a singer in the first yeah. place. What is it yeah. about her that so inspired you? Because she's epic. Yeah. She's unbelievable. It's the first concert I ever went to when I was younger and I was right at the back. She was a dot, literally a dot with her orange microphone and bright hair, but still the most incredible experience of my life. And I left like the arena in Newcastle and I rang my brother and I was like, Johnny, I'm going to do this. And he was like, you're going to do what? I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do music, I'm going to sing, that's going to be me one day at that arena, that's going to be me. And he was like, yes, kid, do it. Like, I, I believe in you, you've got the voice, you can do it. And I was like, she's just changed my life. 
it was the most inspiring thing I've ever seen in my life. So from then on, I was like, right, Perry, you need to get confidence somehow. Because every time I sung for people, they had to have a tea towel on their head or something. Like if my dad asked me to sing, I'd be like, well, you have to stand in the corner with a tea towel on and not look at me and then I'll sing. That's how like self-conscious I was. So after seeing her live, I thought, right, I'm, I'm going to do it. Some, somehow, I'm going to do it. How old were you when you went to that, that gig? I think I was about 14, wow. 15. And it really did kind of turn yeah. a switch. And then I did performing arts in college. That kind of helped my confidence as well. And then X Factor, and obviously that was it. And your X Factor yeah. audition song was a bold choice. I know. You, you ought to know, Alana. It's like you were really kind of going all in. I know. It's not I a typical love X Factor Alanis audition. Morissette. I know, I know. And my mum was like, yeah, great choice. <coughs> Big Alanis fan. She was backing me all the way. And it was just, I don't, I don't know. And then I sang Ave Maria because um, they wanted to hear me sing something else. So it's like one extreme to the other. That's range. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair. Yeah. But it was good. It got me here. So it must have worked somehow. When you look back at like the 11 years of Little Mix, is there any mm. particular highlights for you? Oh God, all of them, to be honest. I mean, we can see some of them behind. We've yes. got the number ones, MTV Awards Brits. Yeah, I mean, that is just epic, isn't it? Look at them Brits, they're so sexy. But yeah, I'm just so proud of everything we achieved together. For me, the best part of being in Little Mix was just experience and everything for the first time, but together. Everything mm. was new, it was exciting. It was just epic but we had each other, so we felt safe, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, everything we achieved together, I'm so, I'm so, so proud. I still think the fact that you were the first girl band to win Best mm. Group at the Brits in 43 years is just an incredible achievement. I know, it's wild, isn't it? It's awful it took 43 years, but it's no, amazing I know. you did it. Tragic, but I'm so grateful that we did. You have uh, the awards and the number one uh, trophies mm. in the yeah. studio. Is that inspiring or sometimes is that a bit like off-putting, like, oh my God, I've got to live up to that? I think it's quite intimidating, it, actually. That's what I was thinking, like, if you're, <laughs> yeah. like, trying I'm to like, write a song oh and you've got God, that. Oh my God, will I ever get an award again? I don't know. But it is pretty wild. I think that's another thing as well, the safety of being in Little Mix. We had such an incredible fan base that we felt almost safe in, in the sense that if we released a song, we knew it would do okay, if not great, because we had the fans. So when you're going at it from a brand new solo artist, you don't know what's going to happen. So it's the fear of the unknown, really. But I hope I get a few more awards <laughs> for myself. <laughs> How would you describe, I mean, it sounds like your album's going to be really eclectic, but like, mm -hmm. what are some of the other sounds that we'll hear on there? There's definitely kind of more towny, like okay. mariah -y vibes on certain things. I think even though it's very eclectic and very different, and it, it's, a, it's a little bit of a journey, but what I wanted to make sure of when my album was finished is that every song that was a different genre had a sister or a sibling on okay. the album. So it's not completely mismatched, a hot mess, just shoving it all on an album. It makes sense when you listen to it as a body of work. So that was massively important for me, even though I wanted my singles to stand out and be like quirky and different on their own to a sense, it needed to make sense on the album. Yeah, no, I can imagine that that's mm. important because if you sometimes, it's great to have like a lot of different sounds now, but if mm. there's just one like it, it can be a bit kind of yeah, difficult. Yeah, so it's, it's hard getting the balance. You don't want a hot mess, but you don't want just something repetitive either. Like every song sounds the same, same genre, guitars, lead, like, and yeah, I think I just wanted upbeat, feel good, soulfully stuff. And then the more guitar led ballads, like I just wanted everything. I just wanted to throw everything in the kitchen sink at it, really. Is there, I mean, Donna Summer was one of the influences on that place. Yeah. Is there kind of dancey, disco -y stuff on there? Yeah, that definitely, out, yeah. Okay. Definitely some vibes in there. And like I say, there's sisters of them. So there's maybe like a handful of that genre, handful of another. And then there's the ballads and the kind of stripped back songs, which I thought were really important for the album as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can't wait for you to hear it. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm excited to hear more. <laughs> yeah. How are you feeling about the single coming out? I mean, fans have been waiting for quite a while and they're mm. really excited, but like, yeah. on day of release, how will you feel? I'm probably ill. I'm probably going to be sick. Um, sick with excitement and just overwhelmed with emotion, I think. I think it's, it's so bizarre to me that I've been doing this journey now for two years, but I've been in my little like cubby at home just thinking nothing of it and now I've actually got to leave the house and promote it I'm like sorry what do you mean what do you mean I've got to do it all on my own but I am excited I just want everyone to hear it though I'm just so impatient so yeah just want to get going really 
If you could go back to the version of you two years ago who said to the label, I don't want to write, just send me songs, what would you say to that version of you? I'd say, oh, you silly little sausage. <laughs> you, you didn't know what you were going to do. I think it did come from a place of not feeling like I was good enough to do it, maybe. So maybe I was just kind of thinking, oh, God, I don't know if you can write. I knew I could sing, obviously, but I didn't know if I could write music from scratch. <laughs> so I guess I just needed to give it a go instead of putting myself in a box, really. You mentioned earlier like needing to take charge in those kind of rooms. Like, mm -hmm. if you do go into a songwriting session now, do you have a set process? Like, do you, is there a certain way you like to write? Like, do you like to start with a beat or a lyric? Like, or does um, it depend? Every session's different, and it depends what producer and writer you're in with as well. So a lot of producers like to work from a beat that they've got or a sound that they've got. Others like to start straight on the keys, find some chords, work from that. And I think ballads always seem to stem from either a keys or a guitar. And then the more upbeat stuff, you'll kind of start adding things and adding beats and then think of melodies over the top. So we'll just kind of pass the little mic around and come up with different melody ideas, then start adding lyrics. So it's different every time. That's why it's exciting, though, I think, because it's fun. You don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> Are you good at saying no? Because I guess sometimes someone must play something for you that you're just like... Yeah, I am. I'm very polite when I say no, but I will be completely honest. And even if I'm in the room and I'm not vibing the song, i would be like, guys, I'm just not vibing it. I think we should try something else. Camille is the biggest one for that. She'll do an idea for three seconds and I'll be like, this is great. And then she's like, no, nope, next. I'm like, what? She just loves to go, 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 go until she's feeling 100% on an idea. She'll just like she's chaotic, but in the best way. But I think creative people are a bit like that. Yeah, they? their brains kind of ping yeah, everywhere. Yeah, they work completely differently, which is fascinating. That's why I've just loved being with such amazing people in this room in this little room. <laughs> mentioned earlier feeling um, imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. Has it got better over this last two years? Do you feel like it's, it's less kind of intense than it was two years ago? Um, I don't know. Parts of it is, but parts of it I'm still working on, I think. I think I'll always be working on my confidence. It's just the way I am. I've been like it since I was a baby. But it, definitely the more I put myself out there, the better I feel for definite, so. Why do you think, where do you think it stems from, that imposter syndrome? Do you think it's just innate in you? I have no idea. I think I'm a huge perfectionist, which doesn't help the situation. Because it's like, you know, like an artist, when you're like, can I see your canvas? And they're like, no, it's not ready. Or can I see it now? No, it's not ready. That's me with everything. So I want to make sure everything's perfect and I'm 100% happy before I even present an idea to somebody, which I think can be quite tricky because I'm yeah. I'm never going to feel comfortable because it's never going to be perfect because there's no such thing so I think it's just learning to kind of let go a little bit I'm a control freak also so <laughs> that, I would imagine would stand you in quite good stead for solo career I think. yeah I hope so it seemed to work so far I'm just so I, I am really really proud of everything I've done these last two years um so hopefully everyone enjoys it when they hear it how does being a perfectionist marry to like laying down vocal because I guess the vocal can always be that bit more perfect oh, and sometimes it's a, a raw vocal that maybe mm -hmm. is technically not the best that's the most emotional. Yeah there is magic in takes mm. that you don't think are going to be the one but I could be in that booth for hours and hours and hours until I perfect things. Sometimes I'll record a song in half an hour and it's done and it just feels easy gone like certain songs on my album but certain songs I think I've probably been in the booth and attacked it at least 20 maybe more times. That's how bad I am. But, and then I'll live with it, listen to it, analyze it, go back in. Live with it, listen to it, analyze it, go back in. <laughs> the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm thinking, it. I feel bad for my team. But it's with the best intentions. It's because I just love what I do and I want it to be right. Who are the main sounding boards when you're playing people music? Like who do you go to first? Uh, my manager, Sam, definitely. Uh, Depeche. I've got such a good relationship with Depeche and I love that he's obviously the head of my label and I can just contact him anytime. Um, and we just message back and forth a lot with production tweaks and he might send me something and one little chord progressions change, but you'll send it and I'll notice something and then I'll, I like, yeah, my ears are pretty intense when it comes to music, but I just know what I want to hear. So as long as my team are happy and I feel happy, then that's great. Does your Obviously. son listen to your music or is he too young to oh, really? Oh, Axel loves my music. He's got his favourites, for definite. Um, and I always know the ones because he always asks, like, mommy, play this, play this. 
and there's a song that he um, features on. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. But he features on one of the songs, and all he wants to do is listen to himself. It's so cute. <laughs> and it, every time's like the first time he hears it. So he, like, I'll play it, and he'll be like, that's Axel, that's me. And then he'll reenact what he does, and he goes, la, 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 la. And I'm like, oh, my God, he's such a fan of himself, and I love it. It makes me feel so happy. But, yeah, he, he loves the album. Um, does he have like a little spoken word bit? Is that what he does or? Yeah, it's so cute. It's so cute. Um, you'll have to wait. So yeah, I don't <laughs> want to give too much away. But yeah, he's really proud of himself. That was in Weymouth. Um, I was finishing up like recording a song I wrote about him and my mum being my mum. She was clearing out the kitchen because obviously with everyone being in the house, we had loads of snacks, food, fridge was piled up with stuff and my mum was thinking, I'm not leaving it. So she's packing up all the stuff in the bin line as meanwhile I was like, Axel, sing on mummy's song and then he did it. It was so cute. Oh. Yeah, I love it. It's kind of an amazing thing. Yeah. When you can play it for his friends when he's a bit older. Yeah. Or maybe he won't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Depends what he thinks of it when he gets older, if it's cool or not, I don't know. It'll probably go through phases of thinking it's cool yeah, and then not quite probably. and then... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, he's, he loves the whole process. He loves being in the studio as well. What was, you mentioned the songwriting camp earlier. Mm -hmm. How did that kind of play into the process as a whole? Was it important to kind of get away from, much as this place has been important, to get somewhere mm. new for, and yeah. have everyone there in one place? Yeah, I think it's And who was on good. the songwriting camp? Was it a lot of people? Yeah, there was a lot of us. And it was like all my favourite people as well. It was literally like a little holiday and it was so sunny and we rented this big house. Um, I think it's good to have a change of, scenery and I think like also being in this house which is quite secluded and it's in the middle of fields it just makes you kind of focus more so like when we're here we'll get distracted maybe from time to time which is fine because it's natural but when we were in Weymouth we were just so focused on what we needed what was missing from my album what I felt like I needed to complete the kind of package so we kind of went into it with a headspace of this is what we're doing but it was also so much fun as well. So it was just a right laugh. Like we all just messed about and <laughs> made music. It was great. It was epic. I guess it must be nice you'd be in a kind of group situation again. Mm, I loved it. I love having people around me. So it was it was unreal. And we had a chef. It was pretty <laughs> wonderful, really. It was great. <laughs> I'll just ask one more question. <clears throat> mm -hmm. If you could sum up the energy of Forget About Us, mm -hmm. how would you describe it? Oh, gosh. Maybe anthemic. Anthemic. That driving in the car, roof down, hair blown in the wind, feeling good, empowering. Probably that. Yeah, I can, I can <laughs> yeah, definitely hear that. That vibe. Amazing. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.